you're listening to the Content Source Podcast, a show all about how to create content to attract, convert, and keep your ideal clients. Welcome to episode 234. I'm Susie Daphnis, and here with me is my co-host, Michelle Fowlson. Hey, Michelle, how are you? Hello, hello, Susie. I am very well, thank you. How are you doing? I am doing great. I, as we are recording, am a few days away from heading out of the country uh, for about three weeks. And so I'm doing that last minute scramble, Michelle, where you've got 25,000 things to do and, um, you know, just a couple of days. <laughs> but I'm good. Very I'm really good. familiar with that scramble, as I'm <laughs> sure many of our listeners are as well. But gee, isn't it good when you get on the plane and the doors close and there is just no more scrambling to be done? I know. There's, you know, just like... Yes, in a bubble. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm also looking forward to this episode because we get asked this question all the time. How much should I be spending on my Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads, Instagram ads, 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 ads? Mm, we sure do. It is a hot topic. And I think it's a hard one for people who are just getting started out. And I, what I really love about today is that we're specifically addressing that. Like, how do I get started with this? How do I make sure I'm not blowing my budget? Where's a good place to put the money if I've got limited resources? So, yeah, I agree with you. Excited about this one. And so to facilitate this conversation, we brought in an expert. Our expert is Stacey Hughes. She's a paid ads expert who helps online business owners, and that includes really anybody who's selling online, uh, to boost brand awareness and attract more clients with attention-getting paid ad campaigns. So whether that's on the meta platforms, Facebook and Instagram, or whether it's on LinkedIn, Stacey really knows how to help clients appeal to their target audience through creating compelling paid ad campaigns that deliver clicks, leads, and ultimately sales. So let's go ahead and get her on the line. Hey, Stacey, welcome to the program. Thank you, Susie and Michelle. I'm so happy to be here. I'm excited to ask you some questions around determining the right budget for our ads. So could you start by telling us how Facebook, LinkedIn or Instagram advertising can actually benefit small business owners, especially those owned by women, where we're trying to generate leads that turn into sales? Yes, certainly. So when we think about our paid ads, we want to think about it is, is that it's one piece of the marketing puzzle. So um, we, we might think that Facebook and Instagram ads are going to fix all of our problems, but unfortunately it doesn't. So we have to think about it as our overall st strategy. And it's a great way for us to get in front of our ideal customers. It's a great way for us to show our organic content, um, if we've done some video and we've spent a long time doing that video, it's a great way to show our ideal customers. What should some of our key objectives be as small business owners, when, especially when we're starting out with Facebook ads? Because you can sink a whole lot of money very, very quickly. And so really knowing why we're doing it, I think is important. So if we could start there, what should our key objectives be initially when we're starting out? Yeah, so when it comes to objectives, it is literal. So if it is leads that we're after, it is important to use the lead campaign objective. Um, and But there's when, when it comes to working out what campaigns we're going to do, we should think about our ads in terms of an ads funnel strategy. So what campaigns are we going to cr um, create at our top of funnel? What campaigns are going to be delivered to people that have never heard of us before? So the campaigns that we would run in this instance might be engagement campaigns to try and build up our audiences. Um, then we might have our middle of funnel campaigns where we retarget people who mm -hmm. have engaged with us and we want to deliver them our amazing lead magnet or get them to come to one of our webinars. And then in the bottom of the funnel, we have our conversion ad, so our sales objective. And this is where we obviously want people to purchase our program or our membership. Um, so we would use that. So one thing, though, a lot of people say they just want sales when it comes to ads, uh, which is great. But if you're delivering sales campaigns to cold traffic, this mm. is when we can really blow out our budget. So people that have never heard of us before, they want to see us a few times. So if we go straight for the sales, then, yeah, that's when we run into trouble with our budget. Oh, that, I'm so glad you said that because it's a really uh, easy mistake to make. And so when you think about um, these objectives, is it that we're introducing ourselves for the very first time? Is it that we're in that consideration phase or actually are we going for the sale? How does that influence our budgeting for our campaigns? How do you think about it when it comes to those three different sort of 
places in the funnel that someone might be when we're advertising to them? Yeah, when I think about budget, I like to think about five to 10% of our overall revenue is to be spent on marketing. And then 50% of that to be spent on paid ads. So that would, and that also works out where your customers are. So for example, if your ideal customers are on LinkedIn, maybe you look at running ads on LinkedIn, or if your customers are mainly on Instagram or Instagram and Facebook, then that's where you spend your budget. I'm loving the specificity of this, Stacey. And so let's just put some real numbers in that. A lot of our listeners, they may have a $100,000 business or a $500,000 business or a million dollar business. Let's say I've got a $100,000 business. You're saying 10% of that is about $10,000 each year on my marketing. And then half of that on my paid ads, about $5,000 on my paid ads. Let's say I'm brand new to paying for ads. I'm, I'm listening to this episode. I'm listening to you and I'm saying, yeah, okay, I'm going to take my budget and I'm going to apply it to ads. Initially though, like how much should I be putting into my first, say, Facebook ad strategy, my first initial advertising budget? Do I put the whole 5,000 down on red 33 and let the, the table <laughs> spin or how do I do that? Yes, we sometimes think about paid ads is is a bit like gambling, isn't it? (laughs) But uh, yeah, definitely. That's a great point. When you're just starting out, it's really important to be building up your audiences. So just spending even if all you can afford is $5 a day or $10 a day, it's a great idea to just get started with ads. And that might be an engagement campaign. So that would be, you know, maybe an organic post that you've done or a reel that you've done, putting some budget behind that. And because we all know sometimes we post these things and if we don't have much of an audience, no one sees it. So it feels like it's it's been a waste of our time. So if we put a bit of budget behind that post, we can show that to new audiences, get people watching that reel, watching that video of us. And that's a really effective way to get started if you don't have much of a budget. I love that. And so, you know, we do have people with budget constraints, financial constraints. And how do I make sure when I'm getting started? I love your advice there about like just get started with five or $10 a day and maybe just start building my audience. But what factors should I consider to make sure like the money I'm spending is really aligned with my business goals and that I'm still operating within those financial constraints because it's kind of a push-pull, right? Yeah, that's right. So it's great to run a lead campaign. That could be one of the campaigns that you first off run. And um, you want to look at your cost per lead. And a lot of people say to me, well, what is a good cost per lead? Mm -hmm. But it all depends on... I can tell you what it isn't. (laughs) (laughs) Have you got a high cost per lead there? Oh, my God. We've had some ridiculously high cost per lead. That's a story for another day, (laughs) Stacey. So, but that's the thing, uh, you know, you really need to run the campaign, get that cost per lead, and then, you know, you've got to ha- have your those leads tagged in your CRM, and then you've got to know the customer journey. So what happens to those leads and how many then go on to join your program or join your membership? Because, you know, sometimes a high cost per lead might happen and you always have to work on getting that cost per lead down. But then it also, you have to nurture them on email and, you know, offer them value in other ways so that when you open your doors, you can then, you know, sell to them. And then you've got that visibility of what your cost, what what your leads that turned into customers. Yeah, and it can take a little while for that story to fully develop. We can look at the lead costs and think, well, they didn't immediately turn into sales. This was a failure. Whereas I think you're making a really important point about tracking those leads. How did they come into my world? And you said talking about tracking it in your CRM. So for anybody listening, if you've got some place that you're storing all your customer names and data, are you tracking where they're coming from? And then later when you're running a sales report, are you looking at that sales report in terms of where did those leads come from? So I've had 10 people buy my course. Oh, look at that. Three of them came from my Facebook lead generation campaign around, you know, X, Y, Z. And that sometimes can take some time. So thanks for sort of spelling that out. And and again, just because people listening to this episode might be really new to Facebook ads, they've maybe been intending to do it for a while. And this show, today's episode is kind of that gentle nudge to do it. When you say a lead campaign, 
can you just elaborate for the listener exactly what that means? Yeah, so that is a campaign that you set up and you're delivering something valuable that somebody wants. So you're something that your ideal customer wants. So you're putting that on a campaign and you're in return for delivering that lead magnet, you're getting their name and email. So the campaign may send people to a landing page where there's a form that collects the person's lead information, so their name and email, or a Another way you can do it is on the platform. So you can do this on Facebook or Instagram where you col- there's a form and you collect their name and email and then you deliver that lead magnet, that thing of value. Or you can do it for your webinar, any type of registration, that type of thing. Um, but it's basically just collecting that name and email in exchange for something. Yeah, thank you so much for clarifying that. And you know, we're still on the limited budget, just getting started kind of track, and we want to maximize this. Are there certain times, like for certain, for example, certain times in my marketing campaign or running up to say maybe a big promotion or are there certain formats or content types or what are the things that are going to be the biggest bang for my buck? Yeah, so there is four campaigns that I recommend that all online business owners should be running. And one of those is what I call the, um, sorry, the Grow campaign. So that is a podcast um, ad, if you have a podcast. And this campaign gets your listeners off Facebook and Instagram and turns them into podcast subscribers. So instead of sending people to your podcast page or to Spotify or Apple to listen to your podcast, you're actually getting their name and email via a form and you're tagging them as a podcast subscriber. So as we know, you know, people listen to us, if they become podcast subscribers, they're you know, they're definitely going to, they're warming up to who we are and what we stand for. So that's one type of campaign. The other campaign that I recommend is running all of the time is your lead magnet campaign. And I call that a flow campaign. So this is something that, you know, a checklist or an ebook. Um, this could be your webinar registrations, that type of thing. So even if you're coming up to launch, Uh, It is something that you could be running all the time and growing your database. If you're in launch time, maybe you scale up that campaign and spend more money to get more people or if you're in the off season. So it is something you run all the time, but you just sort of scale your budget up and down depending on where you're at with your launches. Uh, The other campaign I recommend is a low cost offer. So again, just attracting people to your world, but with some sort of a low cost offer. So um, yeah, something that you may receive the money for, the revenue for that low cost offer, and it's paying for the cost of your ads. So we call that self liquidating. So that's something you can, can run to offset the cost of your campaign. And then ideally, it would offset the cost of all of the campaigns that you're running, the profit that you mm. make from that low cost offer. And then the last campaign that I recommend is what I call um, pro or it's just a play on words of social proof. So this is a post that you have on Facebook or Instagram and it's talking about your program and has a link to that. And then instead of asking people for testimonials where you might do a Google review or some other platform, you send them the link of that post and then you ask them to comment as a testimonial on that post. And then that post is an ad. So people, new people are seeing that post and then they're looking at the comments because that's what we always do when we see these posts and they're seeing all these amazing comments and testimonials about you and your program or offer. Let me see if I understand. So say I have a membership, which I do, Mm -hmm. and so I'll be running an ad about the membership and you would give us the distinctions on how to do that and then I'm inviting people say current members to go to the post and leave a comment is that what you're suggesting and so the social proof is there but that's an ad so everyone who sees that ad is also seeing that social proof 
Yes, exactly. So that is a really effective campaign that is working really well for all of my online business clients at the moment. Um, And it's something that you just have running all of the time because you're constantly just getting people to comment. So yeah, past alumni, past students, getting them to comment as they complete your program or in your membership. Mm. And so that's uh, you know, constantly running and adding to the comments. And then as an ad, it's being shown to new people all of the time. And you can run that from as low as, you know, five or $10 a mm. day and just constantly, you know, getting people, if, especially if you have an evergreen membership, it's a great ad to run. Right. I mean, you could do that also for building up a podcast, I guess, you know, getting people to comment or really anything. I really love that. I haven't heard that strategy before. So good. Yeah. So it's just the organic uh, post on Instagram or Facebook. You get that link, you send it to your past students and then get them to comment. And then you also turn that post Mm. into an ad. So good. Now, um, you talked earlier about, you know, often we think of sales as really the only way to measure the success of having spent money on Facebook, on Instagram, on LinkedIn. How should small business owners measure their success for these types of paid campaigns? Yeah, so I always look at the cost per result. So if you're running a lead campaign, you want to look at that cost per lead. And like you mentioned, sometimes it can really blow out. So it's got to be you know, something that is you know, a low amount. And then also you work on bringing that cost per lead down. But there are some secondary metrics that I look at as well to determine if a campaign is effective or not. So the one thing I look at is click through rate. So you want your click and it's sometimes abbreviated as CTR in the um, reporting platform. Mm-hmm. And you want that to be 1% or greater. If it's less than 1%, perhaps your ads aren't being shown to the right people or there's a problem with your messaging, your ad copy or your ad graphics. So if it's less than 1%, I take a look a little bit further into the campaign and see what changes we can make. This, another secondary metric is landing page views. Mm-hmm. So when you send people Um, from your ad and you send them to your website, they're tracked as landing on that page. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes there's a discrepancy. So say, for example, 300 people landed on your page to to fill out the form to get your lead magnet Mm -hmm. and only 100 people actually filled out that form. So we would take a look at that and say, is there something wrong with my landing page? Is Mm -hmm. the form in the top fold? Or is there some other reason why people aren't filling out that form? So they're the kind of two things. I look at frequency as well, because if your Mm -hmm. ad is being delivered three times or more to the same audience, then perhaps it's time to change out your ad copy and your ad graphics. And another one I look at always is initiate checkout. So this is more for your sales campaign. How many people have initiated checkout but didn't purchase? Because if that is a high number, then there could be a reason why someone hasn't bought from you. I love that. That's so, so practical. And if you're, when you talk about purchase, obviously that would be relevant for uh, a paid offer, but do you use that metric as well for as a conversion metric if and if it's a free offer? Uh, so free offer would be the lead. You, that, your cost per result would be a lead, but gotcha. if it's for a paid offer, it's called purchase. So your cost per purchase is your cost per result in the ads manager. Great. Thank you for clarifying that. I love that. And one thing I want to clarify just for those who might be listening, when you talked about the CTR, the click-through rate of, uh, you know, 1%, can you just explain how that gets calculated? It's 1% of what? Just for the people that are listening at home going, what does that mean? <laughs> so, if it's, for example, when your ad is shown to a group of people, it's 1% of those people that saw your ad took an action. So they looked at it, they clicked on it, they read it. Some type of action determines the engagement. So you want at least 1% of the people that were showing your ad. And I know that sounds really low, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it can be even less less than that so you obviously a greater percentage is going to be better so the higher the better Mm -hmm. but anything one percent or low is worth looking into your ad and why it might not be going to the right people or that the messaging might not be um yeah might, might need to work on those things 
Yeah, I'm, I'm loving the specificity that you're giving our listeners, you know, some real rules of thumb that I think are so helpful. So thank you for that. Once we've kind of got the campaign up and running, you've given us lots of tips for how we might get started, what types of campaigns we might start running, what metrics to be tracking. Can we talk a bit now about optimization? Once we've got the ads running over time, like what are some effective ways you've found to optimize our ad spending over time? And maybe you've got some specific examples or a, a case study where some small tweaks actually really significantly impacted the performance. Yeah, so um, I always like to run a few different ads in a campaign. So a um, few, few different types of ads. So you would like, you should, you know, um, do a video, an image or a carousel. So when you're looking at optimizing, you want to have a look at that. And by giving Facebook a few options to work with, that gives you a bit more data to work with as well. So you want to look at that and just see, maybe it's my video that people are really engaging with, or maybe it's a carousel. So how you can optimize is then by saying, um, I'm going to create some more videos. If video is the most effective one that's working for me, I'm going to do some more. So by doing different types of ads, that really allows you to optimize with with that data and then work out wh what it, what your audience is engaging with there's also different fields when you're setting your ad campaign up in terms of ad copy you can give five versions of ad copy so again just the more you can give facebook to work with or instagram uh, the more that it can show people and then you can work out maybe my audience responds to long copy or maybe it responds to short copy. So having that data, you can then optimize your campaign and then work on, you know, maybe I'm going to give five different versions of short copy next time and see how that performs. Thank you. I'm going to ask you a question that I hadn't planned on, but it follows really well from what you're talking about. So say I am running a webinar and I've got a carousel or a still image and maybe I've done a video. I've seen people sort of really go for, look, have lots of different types of creative, like multiple images, multiple videos, like give, you know, split your budget across a lot of different creative. And then I've had others say, no, just do a couple. Do you have a way that you think about it? Like, is there, can you have too many or too few options yeah, for Facebook? I give at least two to three, it depends on your budget as well, because, you know, you're going to be spreading your budget across a lot of different ads, but I would go at least two to three different ones. So um, yeah. I, my sort of fallback is an image, a carousel and a video right. um, in the one campaign, in the one ad set and then see what the results are. Got it. Yeah. So that's really specific. And I think for most small businesses, it's pretty manageable as well. Mm -hmm. When you look at upcoming trends or changes in either Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn advertising, is there anything we should be prepared for? Uh, AI. AI, the oh. AI tools on the platform are definitely something to work with and not be afraid of, but also when it comes to your audiences as, as well. And you may see this if you're running your own ads at the moment, that um, Meta have um, AI technology when it comes to finding your audience. So it's now more important than ever. It always has been with our organic content to do that consistent content. But now all of those uh, signals from our organic content help Meta find our ideal customer. So, you know, the stories that we do, the reels that we do, sending people to our website, all of those things help that feeds the machine basically. So that AI technology is 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 now it's 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 come such a long way even in the last three to six months. So in the past we used to specify detailed targeting with our audiences mm -hmm. and lookalikes and custom audiences. Now we suggest those things, but it's really we're just using Meta's AI technology tools to find our perfect customer. And I'm seeing it just performing very well for, for most of my clients in that space. May I ask you then, so if uh, if your Facebook ad account is connected to your Facebook page, is what I'm hearing you say is that what you're posting on that page is training Meta 
yeah, about what you're about. And so really being conscious that you are targeting the ideal clients, that your messaging is consistent with the offers that you're going to make and that you're posting, I'm kind of putting, I'm not wanting to put words in anyone's mouth, but it shouldn't be random. It should be very, very deliberate because that's what Meta is going to be looking at to find your ideal client. Yeah, that's what feeds the machine is the signals from your organic content. So, you know, posting those stories consistently that people and even a, a consistent story that sends people off to your website and the types of people that are engaging with that, all of that helps with your ad performance. So you, people, sometimes people just want to run ads and nothing else. Um, yes. But the most effective bang for your buck is having that consistent, consistent organic content strategy on Facebook and Instagram because of all, all of the signals helps your ads as well. So good. Is there anything else you'd like to leave us with? This has been so good, so practical. I know you've got a gift for our listeners, but before we go to that, is there anything you'd like to leave us with? Uh, just that it is good for the, I know as solopreneurs or people with small teams, sometimes we, we think Facebook or Insta or paid ads is just too hard to learn, but it is a really good idea for the business owner to at least understand the fundamentals mm. of how paid ads work. And even if you don't want to do the setup, you can always outsource that to someone on your team. Uh, definitely the best return on ad spend is if someone in-house learns ads and runs your own ads. And then as the business owner, you can set the strategy and then you can quickly change things. You know, if you see that video is really working, you can create that video. So I think it's really important that business owners just have some sort of understanding Understanding about how ads work. I love that advice. And speaking of learning how to do ads, you have the Fab Ads Club, a membership inside of which you provide weekly live sessions. You go through setting up the most optimized campaigns for online business owners to start moving our followers, the people, like you said, who might be seeing us on organic reach into likes and leads. You are giving us a month free into your club uh, when people use the coupon code content sells. We're going to put a link to Stacey's offer over on our show notes page and I'll give you the uh, details for that in a moment. But Stacey, is there anything else you want to say about the Fab Ads Club other than it's got a fab name? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just, I, I love, I want people to, to love Facebook ads or meta ads as, as much as I do. I, I really love uh, teaching people about it. I think it's, it's a very powerful platform that you can use and so yeah I'd, I'd love your listeners to join me inside of my fab ads club wonderful we'll put the link as i said on our show notes page i will give the details in just a couple of minutes stacy thank you so much for joining us it's been awesome no worries thank you for having me thanks stacy I love how practical that was, Michelle, how specific and practical. And I feel like our listeners are going to be really able to implement what Stacey shared. I agree with you. Practical, practical, practical. Lots of things to grab onto and actually go and implement. I loved all the specific suggestions about percentages and types of ads. Really, really awesome. Mm. And I'm so happy with the gift that Stace is giving all of our listeners. And I'll give you the details about that in just a moment. But it's an actual whole free month inside of her membership, which is called the Fab Ads Club. So you'll get to really see um, what's happening inside there and how she's supporting clients to do some of the things that we're talking about here today. Um, before we go further into that, we want to recap some of our takeaways from today's interview with Stacey. And I want to start by something that was a real aha for me, Michelle. I mean, mm. I know that what we pay, uh, post on Facebook or Instagram matters, but now with AI, what Stacey said about what we're posting is training meta, who we are, what our messaging is, and it's determining the ideal clients they find. For me, that was like, whoa, wake up. No random posting. Like be really deliberate and strategic with that posting. Not that we aren't. We are. But this is kind of more of a cause to be really deliberate. Yeah, it kind of increases the stakes, doesn't it? On mm. doing what, you know, we say on this show, like really clear content marketing that's really specifically for somebody because like Stacey said, there are people actually clicking on those links and those interacting with you and the AI is going, well, they're the people you want. Let me go and find mm. more of those and you can pay me to find those people. So you want to make sure you're training it to mm. find the right people and to, you know, really put it in front of people with the, 
the right interests and at the right stage in their business. So I thought that was fantastic. And it really led into a point that I loved that Stacey brought home. And it's something we talk about all the time here on the show, just how holistic our marketing approach needs to be. You know, she said paid ads are just one piece of the puzzle. Yeah. And kind of going out and saying, I just want sales. Let me just do a whole bunch of ads to go straight for the sale. You know, why that's problematic, why that's when we blow our budget. And you hear those horror stories of people saying, I spent $5,000 on Facebook and I got nothing for it, you know. Mm. And so it is just like we always say, you need to attract people. You need to move them into consideration and give them enough information to know you and to know whether this solution is the right type of solution for them. And so I thought that was really brilliant that just you cannot just focus on the sales. It's a whole system. Mm. And and one of the things she said in there, which I love, was the specificity of the how much do I spend? And we're often asked that as well. And it's a kind of it depends question. So I like what she said about if you consider 5 to 10% of your overall revenue, spent on marketing. Now you map that across to whatever your revenue is. And then she's saying then 50% of that going on paid ads. So that kind of gives you a benchmark. Now you may want to go much higher than that. You may just be really confident in your offer and your conversion and you want to go higher. But I love that there's a benchmark. And I love that someone who is an expert in this said, well, this is what I see working with my clients. And so again, those numbers were, if you consider five to 10% of your revenue, spending that on your marketing, and then half of that on paid advertising. So I, I love that just as having a place to start. Yeah, it's great. And I, I also liked what she said about making sure that you're really paying attention to what happens after somebody joins your list. So if you're promoting mm. ads to get leads, then uh, you can go ahead and make sure you track those people because I think oftentimes the failure with Facebook ads is actually in how we're measuring the what happens to those people after they come into our world because sometimes somebody does not buy on the first webinar but they come to the second webinar or they join uh, some other, they download another lead magnet and step into your world some other way. And you mm. want to track where did those leads come from? Did that mm. money that I spent, maybe I didn't get my money back in six weeks, but in the first six months, I'm actually doing far better than I thought. And I see this all the time. And Susie, I know you do too. Yeah. When people say, oh, I spent a thousand dollars on Facebook ads and I only got like 500 leads. And you think, oh my God, <laughs> like, mm. you know, but, but, you know, I didn't get any sales. Mm. And you think, but well, also, hang on, yeah. how long did you measure that for? But also the opposite is true, right? You can get really inexpensive leads and then you look at it a year later and you think they didn't turn into anything. Mm. And I know we've had some great lead magnets over the years that would just flew out the door, if that's even a thing, you know, just really cheap leads, but they weren't a hand-in-glove fit for the offers we were making. And so watching what happens is I think key to what you're saying. Watch what happens. Do they convert over time? Is it a matter of nurturing them and therefore you'll see the money being returned to you? Or don't be excited just if you have cheap leads because are they converting as well? So it's a matter of us just getting smarter as content marketers and really watching those numbers and those leads as they come in, what happens to them over time. Yeah, 100%. You know, just gets back to that idea. It's all connected. It's all holistic. And uh, I also really like the four campaigns she recommended. Mm, it was cute mm. content too, like just to go meta mm. for a minute, not meta Facebook, but just meta as in mm. watch what Stacey was doing there. She had these four campaigns that she recommends and they kind of all kind of rhymed. There was the grow campaign, the flow campaign, the low cost campaign and the pro campaign. And I just thought it was a good piece of content for her as a content creator and an expert and a thought leader. But also they are really great. That's great advice on the four campaigns. So the podcast mm. ad to get mm. listeners off those third-party platforms, the flow campaign that you keep on all the time, just getting that lead flow of people signing up for a lead magnet, the low-cost offer where you're recommending something that might be, you know, 20 bucks, but it might mm. be starting to liquidate your ad costs. And, Susie, we, we, we've got a great episode with Brandy Moles on mm. um, self-liquidating offers, so we'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. Mm. If you're interested in, in that idea 
uh, we've got a great episode that can take you further on that. And then the pro, which was that social proof, wasn't that a great idea? Well, it's so good. Uh, for me, you know, all of those are fantastic. And I too like how they rhymed and, you know, it's a great little model. Um, but for me, yeah, I made note of the pro, the social proof. Again, it's just like sometimes you just need a system and a formula. And so that one was just so easy. Get your clients who love you to comment on an organic post and make that an ad. Now, you know, we've all seen ads and there's no comments, but imagine going to an ad and here you are, there's 10 people who've said, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. This membership is great. This online course is terrific. I always buy my earrings from plumpedal.com.au, you know, whatever it is. A little plan yeah. for one of our members there. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so, so good. And I also liked the growth strategy, you know, even for us, Michelle, around the, oh, okay, getting listeners off a third-party platform and very easily with one click, having it be a lead ad, and now yeah. they can get updates every time we release a brand new fantastic episode of the Content Source Podcast. So, so, so yeah, good. I love so, it. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you to Stacey. Um, as I said, we have a gift, and I'm, I'll mention that one more time. So it's a one-month free inside of Stacey's Fab Ads Club where she gives you weekly live sessions. She goes through setting up optimized campaigns. Really get in there, check it out for the first month, and if you like it, stay with it. All you need to do is use the Content Cells um, all one word, coupon code content cells to get your first month free. We will put a link over at, I'm going to give you the address right now. I'm just looking for it. It's herbusiness.com forward slash ad budget, A-D-B-U-D-G-E-T, herbusiness.com forward slash ad budget. Now, uh, speaking of fans and people leaving you good reviews, the lovely Alex Hanlon from Fair Pay Negotiations has left us a review about episode 224. Now, a little bit about Alex. She has a fabulous business supporting Korean women to take control of their earnings and negotiate better play, something we know is so important in the corporate world for women to get their fair pay, better conditions and career enhancing opportunities. And she does this through her online course and her group coaching. And the episode that she um, commented on was episode 224, which was about exploding mountains. Now, this was this idea. This is a really popular podcast episode. It's really about going back and looking at your suite of products and services and looking at what might be sucking up energy and not giving you a return on investment, what you might be doing because you've always done it, even though it no longer serves you. Check it out, episode 224. We'll put a link in the show notes. She said this. She said, just jumping on to say how much I appreciated episode 224, Exploding Mountains. This episode helped me realize that my main marketing mountain was actually three in one. Whoopsie. And of course, I've had that reflected on my website. She said, so having received your wisdom and your permission to explode some mountains, I spent some time yesterday reimagining and simplifying my customer journey. So thank you. Thank you for giving me a jolly good poke. I certainly needed to hear this. And she left a five-star review. Thank you so much, Alex. You're such a wonderful uh, fan of the show. And I love that you are making a big difference to women in corporate. And I love that you are exploding mountains left, right, and center. So thank you to Alex. And if you enjoyed this episode or any episode of the show, we would love it if you left us a review or rating over on Apple Podcasts. Now, anything we mentioned here on the show today and we back referenced a couple of other great episodes, you can find that at herbusiness.com forward slash ad budget. Michelle, what do we have coming up in the next episode? Well, I love a good tool, a good social media tool, a good AI tool, a good content marketing tool. And uh, we're going to be talking about the tools we're loving right now, the content marketing tools we're loving right now. This has kind of become a bit of an annual episode. Yes. Which is so great. And so we're updating it for this year that we are in at 2024. And we're going to be updating the special download that goes with it. This is an episode you must check out. And uh, looking forward to sharing that in the next show. Yes. And as Michelle said, it comes with a really comprehensive list of our highly recommended tools. So that episode comes out two weeks from the release of this episode. If you don't already subscribe, hit that subscribe button and we'll see you back here uh, for that episode. Michelle, anything you want to say before we go? Well, again, special thanks to Stacey. Absolutely knocked it out of the park. And if you're listening to this and you haven't done any ads, just give it a go. Get started with something simple. There's a tip in here in this episode that Stacey's given you that you can start with. And as she said, for as little as $5 a day, you can do this. Let's go and see what it looks like. 
Thanks, Michelle. Um, Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you next time right here on the Content Source Podcast. Bye for now.